Puff Daddy is the king yeah. of deception. Puffy has been making money off of Biggie's name for longer than Biggie was alive. Well, we know he was murdered, but we believe that the LAPD knows who's responsible. These people out there, and they out there to hurt you. Check out the picture. It seemed like everybody go to jail or end up dead but you. To all those wondering whether Biggie's murder was as much of a surprise for him as it was for us, the answer is no. It seems that a lot of people knew the unfortunate turn of events that were supposed to take place that night, including Biggie himself. But he was too much of an optimist to pay heed to the danger that loomed over his head. And this revelation is made by none other than Fat Joe, a fellow rapper and a close acquaintance of Biggie. Fat Joe has disclosed that he was one of the closest people to Biggie, and they even had an album in the making which never made the final cut. How close were you uh, to Biggie? Man, I can't say I'm a junior mafia, but I can say out of all rappers, me and Jay-Z was the closest to Biggie, I think. Joe recalled both men showing their mutual respect for one another, whilst working on an album that may never actually be heard by both men's loyal fans. The American rapper did explain the reason behind the fact that no one has ever heard anything about the project. The songs were mainly aimed at dissing Tupac, who at the time had his fair share of bust-ups with Biggie Smalls. Joe went on to explain that both men had finished five songs together, which could be proven by Puff Daddy, who witnessed the entire process unfold. Nah, we did like four songs, but... You did four songs with Biggie, Biggie that no one's ever heard? Never. What? Who was the producer? If you do, you'll get upset. Who was the producer? It's uh, Puff Daddy. Another facet of their bond could be that Fat Joe was the one who assigned Biggie his first album. So he was partly Biggie's mentor, and that's the reason he made it big in the music industry, along with Diddy. So it was quite fair the amount of admiration they had for each other. So Biggie, before he blew up, I gave Biggie Smalls his first show ever. But being the closest person to Biggie came with its cons. Fat Joe was aware of everything that went downhill, and he has been very open about the occurrences that led to Biggie's death. Joe, being a good friend, tried to ward off the danger and warn his naive friend Biggie. He even tried to alert Biggie in clear words, saying there are people who wouldn't want Biggie to be rich, popular, and successful. Furthermore, they would even go to the lengths of hurting Biggie. There's people out there, and they out there to hurt you. By people, Joe meant Diddy. But why would Diddy set out a hit on Biggie, considering he was the reason the latter got immense recognition? Looks like jealousy is the answer. We all know the top rappers in the music industry can be insanely possessive when it comes to their status in the industry. Diddy could feel his position faltering with Biggie in the picture and decided it was time to remove the hurdle. Furthermore, Diddy resorting to criminal tendencies isn't a surprise. He is known to get his hands dirty to get things done. So it should be no surprise that Diddy planned the hit on Biggie to eliminate competition. Diddy's former bodyguard, Gene Deal, explicitly shared similar sentiments on why Diddy would go to such an extent. In an interview, Deal claimed that Biggie planned to leave Bad Boy Records behind for a better deal elsewhere. Joe also verified this and stated that Diddy wasn't too happy with Biggie's decision to part ways with Bad Boy Records. This is because Diddy was insecure about the fact that Biggie would continue to flourish without necessarily being under the shadow of Diddy. As part of Bad Boy Records, Diddy being the one to introduce Big would always get the credit for whatever Biggie achieved but that would have only lasted for as long as Biggie stayed with him. The audience was smart to connect the dots. Someone commented, people don't realize if Pac, Biggie, and Easy started their own label, it would have taken over the industry. In response to this, another commented, they don't care if you're doing good, they just never want to see you doing better than them, especially when they're not around. It seems like the audience isn't the only one that realized this fact. A lot of people in the industry, as well as Biggie's family, are quite aware of the reality that Diddy's brewing jealousy resulted in Biggie losing his life. Biggie's family, for example, have been quite upfront about their suspicion regarding the murder. His wife, Faith Evans, stated that even the authorities are aware of who's responsible for Biggie's death, yet no one seems to be doing anything. Well, we know he was murdered, but we believe that the LAPD knows who's responsible. Biggie's mom, Valletta Wallace, said something similar. 
I have a very good idea who murdered Christopher, and I genuinely believe that the LAPD know exactly who did it too, she said. They've done their investigation, but they just refuse to move forward. I don't know why they haven't arrested who was involved. It seems to me that it's one giant conspiracy, and someone is definitely being protected somewhere down the line. There's no closure for me until that murderer is behind bars and sentenced, she said. If those weren't enough accusations, she went a step ahead and targeted his associates directly. Some of his associates, I still want to strangle them. We all know who she was talking about. She wanted Diddy to pay for what he made Biggie go through. It seemed like what started off as a mentor-follower relationship between Diddy and Biggie transformed into an ugly business agreement of sorts, in which the possibility that one party wanted out wasn't remotely fathomable for the other party. A similar implication was made by Biggie's ex-bodyguard, Gene Deal. He said in an interview that it was strictly business between the two, with no friendship other than on professional grounds. Deal also happened to be the witness of the murder apart from Diddy. He insisted that the Brooklyn rapper's untimely demise technically wasn't the result of a drive-by, as he believes the killer, who has yet to be identified by police, was already lurking in wait prior to pulling the trigger. He continued, wasn't no drive-by, the car was standing there at the corner. The stories they tell is not truthful, and now people are sitting here believing. Not only that, Deal also gave the gory details about how the murder was planned because the killer awaited Biggie's car. When the witness tells you the car was stood right there at the corner, the car was probably there all night. Now this might not imply Diddy's involvement in the hit, but what Deal said next did. It's no secret that Biggie on the night of the murder was accompanied by Diddy and Gene Deal in a separate car. And Deal very blatantly exposed Diddy by claiming that Diddy told him to not accompany them on the night of the murder. Diddy telling his bodyguard against escorting them could only mean one thing. He wanted no hindrance in the execution of his murder plan. And having a bulky trained bodyguard was one. Deal said, Before we left Andre Harrell's house, Puff told me I didn't have to go. Now, I went because I knew that somebody was going to die that night. Somebody was going to get shot. Fans were quick to smell something fishy. One person commented, Crazy part, Diddy always rode in the same car as Big. Just this one time, Diddy did not ride with him. Another fact was pointed out by someone, He was in the vehicle in front, and for whatever reason, he ran the light leaving Big's vehicle by itself and without security. Things that make you go, hmm. This seems like a lot of coincidences in one night, right? Moreover, it was highly suspicious how soon after Biggie's death, Diddy released a song to pay tribute to him. I lace the track, you lock the flow. So far from hanging on the block for dough. Notorious, they got to know that. Life ain't always. The rapper's hit, I'll Be Missing You, was apparently written to honor Notorious B.I.G. after the rapper was fatally shot in March of 1997. The song, a collaboration with Faith Evans and featuring 112, debuted at number one on the Billboard Hot 100 on June 14, 1997 and stayed atop the chart for 11 weeks. It remained on the all-genre tally for a total of 33 weeks. It remains no mystery that the release of the song served Diddy two purposes. The first being money and popularity. The audience was already struggling with the news of the murder and this stunt earned Diddy a lot of sympathy and more importantly, cash. Secondly, the song was a poor attempt at evading any suspicions, which obviously didn't work out as more and more witnesses testified to the real story. All these incidents and statements linked to Biggie's death bring us back to Fat Joe's attempts at teaching his friend. Indeed, Biggie's life could have been spared had he taken notice of Joe's warnings. As of now, we can only hope Biggie gets his due justice, because Diddy doesn't seem to be stopping at anything to remain afloat in the music industry. And Biggie certainly wasn't his only target. That's it for today, folks. Until next time, goodbye.